Today we're going to repair this hole created by when we had to cut into the ceiling and the wall to fix a plumbing problem. So I'm going to end up marking a cut point that splits this ceiling joist so that I can put a patch between here and there. So I, I've marked my line here and a line here to make a square cut with the replacement drywall. The only caution you have to have, we need at least, we need three quarters of an inch of this joist to, to fasten into. And the only problem we might have is running into some screws that are in here, but I'll, I'll hear them and uh, take them out when it comes to that point. I found a screw here while I was cutting it out and so I'm going to take it out. It's probably been done recently because this ceiling was originally done with all nails. I'm using a what's either called a, a multi-two or a vibration cutter. I picked this up at Amazon for under $40. It actually works better than the cordless ones I had before. this cut on the, on the wall portion. It's a bit uneven, but the beauty with drywall and taping is taping covers a multitude of sins. And after we get done with taping, uh, we say that painting covers a multitude of sins. Uh, all right, so I'm going to take all of this stuff out as best as I can. Uh, I did cut along here to separate it from the wall, always a good idea. Oh, and then I'll, I'll use a, a, a knife to clean that up. Handy dandy utility knife here and I'm just going to clean up some edges, uh, especially right along here. Now I will tell you this. If it wasn't for the fact that we originally brought it to this point when we were in such a scurry to fix the plumbing, I probably would have cut it along the edge of here and put a, uh, a board here to screw the new one into so I wouldn't have to be quite so accurate with the replacement board. But at this point, this works. This, this should work out fine. Uh, drywall is rather forgiving uh, go over here I still haven't gotten this done oh, there we go that piece came up uh, and just getting old pieces out of the way to make room for the new and we'll also end up shaving a little bit of this off uh, when I'm all done Take out some screws here. I think I'm the one that put this drywall up from a previous leak from several years ago. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, now we get ready to cut. Normally this is being ceiling is 5 8 and normally wall is half inch but in this case because this is a motel and this is a wall between rooms it seems as though they've done this wall at 5 8 as well so we're using the same drywall for both of them. I'm going to cut it out of this piece of drywall here and if you've never cut drywall before it's as easy as score, snap, and, and clean up. So I put my marks here for the width of that section. I'll score it with a utility knife. Snap it. Cut the back. And if there's any rough edges left, I'll 
clean them off, but that looks pretty good. Next, I'll cut two pieces, one for the width of the ceiling and one for the height of the wall. This section that was cut out ends in between studs, and rather than cutting it all the way back to a stud, it's a very simple matter with drywall to just put a board behind it and anchor both the existing drywall and the new drywall to that board. Uh, just an important tip, I put a screw in there to begin with so I can keep hold of it. And I'm going to put it in here. I'm sure you can see the whole board at this point. I'll let that rest right there while I put the screw in there. set that screw just so it's below the surface so it doesn't show up when we do the final taping. I do have a special bit, but at this point I'm not using it. I might use it for later. It keeps it from going too far down. I'll put one more in there for good measure, and then we'll be ready to put the other board up. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark where this joist is in the middle. That way I'll know what to hit. The other screws go in the ends. I'm going to put this up here. It seems as though it's terribly recessed from the original, but that's because of the original taping that came down from the corners. And we will take care of all of that with our taping. I have put my special cheap little bit on the end of this, which is just it just keeps the screw from going in too far. So I can just screw until it ratchets, but with a lot, a lot of pressure on it. I'll get these two. I did the the wall first because this was not exact and the ceiling piece will come up there and hide that crack when I put that up. All right, so I got the final board cut to size. I had to trim the hole a little bit so that it would fit up there. And maybe the other direction I cut it. Let's find out. There we go. And I tend to put a couple of screws in ahead of time just so I'm prepped. That one didn't go in. This one will. Pull this one out. Never leave a loose screw and it'll mess with your taping. Can you angle that a little bit? And besides putting screws in the new one, I'm also going to put a couple of screws here in case I took out supporting screws. So sometimes using that special bit, it won't do angled screws very well. So I have to come through and set set them a little more and I'll do these the same way you can get by without a special bit for small projects that one's set that one's set and I'll put a couple more in here just in case so I'm going to do a little prep here before I tape get rid of some border loose paper. That's okay. See, loose paper like that. This over here got deteriorated from water. I'm just going to get rid of loose 
paper up here. That's not bad. And actually, that's all glued down pretty well. It's the paper and the textured paint at this end. So I'm kind of set to go ahead and put this in and tape this. All right, so I'm going to use what's called a uh, 20 minute uh, wall compound material because it sets in 20 minutes. You actually have probably 10 to 15 minutes to work with it before it becomes too difficult. I start by putting a little water in a pan. So that there's water at the bottom of the pan and then I add my stuff and then continue to add water as I need it. Today I'm going to mix up a generous amount because there's a lot of dips and stuff that needs to be filled in and I really don't like mixing more than I more than one. So I'd rather over mix and throw away the excess than than not mix enough and have to mix it again. So I'm I'm starting to work it in. I'm going to add some more water, work it in until I know I've got enough. Work it in, get the corners, and soon enough I'll be able to mix a little faster when I'm not spraying things out. So. The idea is to get a consistency, I would say, of, I don't know, cake frosting. I don't want it so thick that I can't put it on, and I don't want it so thin working on the ceiling that it will blob off. It's kind of a, an experience thing. I know when I'm there. And that's a little gloopy and still a little lumpy, so I'm going to add a bit more powder to it. Get it in there slowly before I start doing the rapid beat thing. I'm using a 10 inch knife to do this. Anything smaller or bigger wouldn't work in one of these pans, all right? I use almost exclusively two types of knives. One is a 10 inch with square handles, and then I also have a six inch that is a little more rounded on the edges. I'm looking for it. So this is the consistency I have. I think that's a pretty decent consistency. Uh, normally I would look at my clock, see how much time I have, but this is a short project, so we should be okay. And because I have so much, sometimes I do sections at a time, I think I'll do this, oops. I'm gonna switch to my 10 inch knife. Different people do it different ways. I'm just going to put a good layer, thick layer on that. And this corner here, I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. The one thing we don't want is the tape to be dry between the tape and the wall board. Now, I've already pre-cut, uh, pre-tore off some pieces of tape because my lovely assistant is holding the camera so I have to do it ahead of time. I take it, I crease it, stick it up there, finger it into the corners, use my six inch blade, rip off the excess and then use my blade. This is awkward because of the different layers to squeeze out the excess underneath that tape. Just like that. And then we're going to go up here. This one's easier to do because I don't have this board here in the way. I'll go over that one more time. I like to use tape and not the perforated tape because it hides better when I don't get enough coats on. 
right? So I'm not going to worry too much about that at this point. I may wait till the second coating to do anything else with that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this one right here. I took off the light here just so it wouldn't get in the way of this. As you can see, it would have. All right, then I'm going to take one of these, put it across here like this. Again, tear off my excess and then run my knife over that to squeeze anything underneath it out and remember that there's quite a little layer there so I'm going to be very careful here I might even use my fingers I should have gloves on because this stuff will dry out your hands but I don't and I will just squeeze that down with my hand you can see there's a ridge there but we're going to take care of that sorry I'm making a mess don't normally make that big of a mess but this is a little bit awkward so I'm going to go in there right now and put a layer of this stuff in there and because of how much this is consuming I may not have mixed up enough that's okay I can mix up some more So it's a first layer, I don't get it very thick, and then I will fix problems with the next layer. So I don't want to fiddle faddle with that too much. Now, we've got these ends to take care of, and I want to take care of them now while this stuff is wet. I want to be careful where I lay this down at so that it doesn't get dusty things on it because that will ruin uh, its ability to put down smooth. I'm going to use my small knife here to cut this even squarer. Put this here, overlap it a little bit, put it on there, and again squeeze out the excess from underneath the tape. Oops. If it's small enough that it wants to move, we'll put a layer there. We'll bring this one this way, and really, we won't worry about that until the next coating. Scrape up the excess so you don't have lots of sanding to do. Now I've got a little piece left here. I'm going to fold that in half, put it in this corner. that taken care of. Squeeze out the excess, squeeze out the excess, and then we'll put a little bit of a smooth layer over that. That needs to get it started. Trust me, when you get all done, you won't notice all these little bumps and ridges in that, but it's not going to be done with this coating. And so we will do that with the rest of these things using the same technique. Okay, so I'm putting on the last piece of tape. We did have just enough mixture to get this last one on. Uh, and again, it's a matter of basically getting the tape on there and then squeezing out the excess from underneath. Uh, that's the way I've been doing it. And uh, quite frankly, I've only worked with a professional once on this and this is kind of the way he did it, but I don't know how the professionals do it. I am not a professional, but I've done lots of taping uh, and texturing after the fact. I do texture because I'm not good enough to make it smooth enough after the fact to not texture. Now because I have some extra stuff left, I may go around and just put an extra coating to make sure that everything is covered. I'm especially concerned with 
this recess along this side. So let's see if we can kind of build that out a little bit. With the stuff we have now so I don't have to mix up quite so much next time. See that tape that wanted to pull away from the corner? I'm going to push it back in there as I bring that down like that. clean this relatively soon before it starts setting up just using water and I use a dish brush and water lots of water and a dish brush to wash it out I have a special sink that I use that has a special trap that picks up any large hunks of stuff so uh, you can dink around with this a lot but right now while it's wet it's just gonna it would frustrate me. So I'm just going to leave it and take care of it after it's dry with the next coat. I'm a little concerned with this paper here. It wants to pull away. I'm going to squeeze it down a little bit more. Make sure it's really up against there, and I'll just, this, this, you won't, doesn't seem like much, but that's recessed because the paper and the paint came off. So as long as I've got some now, I'm just going to put a coat on there right now, get rid of my extra. to this in a couple hours so it's not quite completely dry dry yet or it would all be this color here but it's solid enough that I can put another layer over it at some point we let it dry completely this is about an hour and a half after we put this stuff up and you can see where it still is a little bit uh, which is not a bad idea because it lets me smooth it out without using sandpaper uh, get rid of some things and so I just gently go over it with a knife and get some big rough edges off of it that would get in the way of the next layer uh, and then the next time after I put this next batch on then I'm going to make sure it's completely dry so it's all this uh, whitish color instead of gray color, which indicates it is dried all the way through. But this does let me scrape the stuff off a little easier. And mix up a new batch and put it on uh, all right okay so this is the result of putting on the second coat i we, we ran out of the battery but at this point i come through with a knife and scrape any ridges off that was left behind uh, there's still a lot of little things in there that I can get with a third and probably final coat to get rid of the lines and ridges that were left behind and it's, it's easier doing it this way than trying to finesse covering it with, with the wet stuff. So, uh, and I may or may not use, I, I don't know if I use much sandpaper at this point, but save the sandpaper for after uh, the final coat. So I've mixed up a whole lot less this time, and I've tried to make it just a little thinner material because I'm filling in small areas with this. 
Uh, and that's uh, little lines like this, I hope will disappear. Uh, and if not, texturing will help them disappear. I also wipe this down with a dry rag to get rid of any dust particles that might end up messing up my, my uh, the drag. If there's some lines going the other way, I'll go crossways on it to fill them in. Okay, so I drug this down this way because the ridges were going up and down, so I drag it this way in order to help those disappear. And I have a little bit of too much of a ridge to sand here, so I'm, I'm carrying that out just a little bit more. A little bit of garbage got in there, which is never good for... You see a little place here I haven't gotten right there. Well, that's behind the light, so I guess I don't have to worry about that too much. Come over here and do this once and we're kind of done at this point. What is, is we texture and we paint. Raised ridges are okay, they'll come off, but recessed ridges are best to fill in. Oh, I think that's going to be it. Okay, so the last thing, I, I've already done some scraping of some of the bigger lines before I go to sanding. And then you see these little lines here, they'll disappear as I kind of sand in between. The sandpaper reaches in between the old texture and helps make all those things disappear. Uh, and that's behind the light, so I shouldn't spend a lot of time on that. And it's just a matter of sanding it down until you feel comfortable with it. So a final thing is to put some wall texture on it, and you can buy some individual cans of this wall texture it comes in both fast dry and normal dry. The fast dry is kind of an oil based one as opposed to a water based one, but it dries so quickly anyway that it's hardly worth going with the oil based one. I'll shoot, I've got it set to kind of a medium. You can adjust the, the, the amount of texture, and I'm going to do a little test run right here because this is where the mirror sits. Might go just a little heavier. And heavier means this direction. <coughs> there we go. And we texture. I've also run this under some hot water, and I might do that halfway through. It helps pressurize the can a little bit. If you want to see what it's doing, that's what it's doing in there. It 
won't exactly match the texture that's there, but it'll get close enough that unless somebody's looking for it when they enter the room, they'll, they won't notice. Before I paint, I might just glance over it with with the putty with the uh, taping knife just to knock off high points. All right.